hey guys welcome back to channel to go funny lungu back with another reaction video if you're new welcome if you're not welcome back thank you for subscribing liking commenting sharing everything that you guys do never goes unnoticed hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed so today i'm going to be reacting to why does the quran call the jews eps rabbi tovia singer responds without wasting time let's get into the video Okay, uh, Rabbi, let's let's discuss something real fast regarding the Quran, if that's okay. Let me let me find sure. it on the list here because the list is getting kind of long. Um, okay, is is it true that the Quran calls the Jews apes or any kind of derogatory uh, statement uh, or title of any kind? Is that or is that just a claim? It's kind of like earlier you mentioned uh, how the Christians really have a misconception of Muslims. Um, is this a similar type of situation? That's a good question. Um, well, the answer is that the Quran does call Jews apes, but people don't are not familiar with the context of like like is is the Quran just saying that Jews are a bunch of animals? That's not what's going on at all. In fact, the Quran speaks very highly of the Jewish people. You know, what's interesting is that uh, the Quran really does not speak to Muhammad's um, genealogy, um, who he's from, who is, who is he a descendant of. It's not spoken of, although there's conventional thought that he's a descendant of Ishmael, but it's not discussed. It means that the Quran generally is not at all, not like in the Christian Bible, it goes to genealogies and so on. Quran is not interested in genealogies. But when it comes to the Jews, it is. And it refers to the Jews as the children of Jacob or the Jews in many different ways and speaks of them in, um, in very illustrious terms, that God had a special favor for them and so on. You'll find that in um, Al-Baqarah, which is uh, the longest surah in the Quran. The Quran is 114 um, chapters. Uh, the longest of it is the chapter 2. Uh, Bakra, which means uh, the cow, and it's a, it's a huge surah. It's a 286 passages, and in 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 verse 64 and 65, it, it the Quran is condemning Jews who don't keep Shabbos. That's the context. You will find a cross reference that also in uh, Surah 7, verse 1. One, 166. Um, so w what's happening is Muhammad is saying to the Jews, you were, you know, you were shown favor. And, 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 he, and he speaks about the re Jewish people receiving the Torah at Mount Sinai, literally, and, and you're not keeping Shabbos, so then you're, you are apes. And it's very, very interesting. In, um, in verse 60, I believe, of Surah 2, uh, the text says that, you know, God made a special covenant with you, and he held a mountain on top of you. He held a mountain on top of you, and, you know, and, and m made this unique relation with you, and why aren't you keeping Shabbos? I mean, how different is that than the Christian Bible, where Paul is telling Jews not to keep Shabbos? How different, so, so Muhammad is saying, the, the, the Quran is saying, that condemning Jews who don't keep Shabbos. I, I, I remember speaking to a Yemenite Jew who uh, told me that in Yemen, there were no Christians in Yemen. They were never basically permitted in the country. But Jews flourished in Yemen for two and a half thousand years. And he said the rules were that if a Jew remained faithful to his um, faithful to his religion and kept Shabbos and kept the Torah. They were, they were the people of the book. They were completely protected and had a very, very good life. And Jews did very, very well in Islamic countries. We did better <laughs> than Muslims did. Muslims might be killing each other, and unfortunately, tragically, we see this today. But actually, Jews flourished in the Islamic world. We were there before the advent of Islam, whether it was in, in what is today Iraq or in you know, the Jews did very, very well in, in North Africa. Terrific. Uh, generally speaking, there are a few exceptions and so on, but because there was a few crazy groups, you know, we have crazies. But it's interesting that I look at the tafsir, the Islamic commentaries on, like, like God held a mountain over you. That's what it says in the Quran 
in in Al-Bakra. So, so the 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 classical Islamic commentators um, are trying to figure out what does that mean. He put a a mountain on top of you. Like, what does that mean of the Jews? So it's very interesting. So, as it turns out, that the this is it says this in the Talmud. The Gemara says it's the Gemara and Shabbos. Um, on Shabbat, the tractate Shabbat, Daf Pei Ches Omer Aleph, that's 88a, the Gemara says that there's a verse in, if you go to Exodus chapter 19, verse 17. So in Exodus 19, verse 17, just to frame this, this is the chapter right before the Ten Commandments. God is about to, you know, give to the Jewish people the Ten Commandments, which includes you know, keep the Sabbath, you know, remember, remember the Shabbos and so on, the sanctity of the Shabbos. So at the end of the passage, so in, in verse 19, in, in Exodus 19, verse 70, it's very interesting. Now, all the translators ended by saying, and the people stood at the foot of the mountain, okay? Almost every translation runs that way. But at the Hebrew doesn't say that. It says that the people were underneath the mountain, but no one translates it that way. And the Gemara says that when the Jewish people were ready to receive the Torah at Mount Sinai, so Kofaf, uh, that, that Hashem, Kofaf um, Aleim Har Chagigis, that Hash, the Almighty put a mountain on top of the Jewish people, and he said, if you ex- Im- if, if you accept, if you be makabel the Torah, the makabel Torah, then meitav, then it's good. If you accept the Torah, the imlav, and if you don't, shom kvuraschem, this will be your burial place. You'll be dead. I'll kill you. That means that what's, I know I'm going to get a lot of questions on that, like where was their free will. That's beyond the scope of this question, so I don't want to get forlorn. But the key point is that the Jewish people, their only purpose is to serve God through the Torah. And therefore, so uh, in the Quran, as I said, if you'll find it in, in chapter 2, you find chapter 7, Muhammad calls Jews who don't keep Shabbos, you have to just read it in context, calls them apes. Now, I'll tell you this, if, if I was, if, when I was a kid, if I, I don't know, didn't keep Shabbos, uh, my father would call me worse than an ape. Uh, he, I don't, God only knows what would happen. You know, I'd be in a, in a lot of trouble. So he, it, it's an interesting contrast uh, between um, between the Quran and the Christian Bible. The Christian Bible is telling the Jews, you don't have to eat, keep, you don't have to eat kosher, you don't have to keep Shabbos, you don't have to do anything. You look at Mark chapter seven, verse twenty and twenty-one. You're making thing. You look at Acts with Peter seeing the sheet with with unclean animals and go eat it. I mean, the, the Romans chapter seven. Paul is ex- exhorting the Jews. You don't have to keep the law anymore. To the Jews, people think that Paul was telling non-Jews they don't have to keep the law. It's nonsense. Paul was telling non-Jews, he was telling that also to Jewish people. When he wrote the book of Romans, he was writing it to churches that he had not yet been to. It's, it's different than other books. And he tells Jews, that's it, that's it, your spouse died. It's a whole chapter dedicated to Jews not keeping Torah. So Paul is telling Jews not to keep Torah. So in the Quran, Muhammad says that you are, you are apes, referring to Jews who are not keeping Shabbos. Now, there is, among Islamic commentators, like, what does that exactly mean, that they're apes? So, if in, the, in Arabic, it actually reads like they are apes, they're made into apes. Uh, but... The comment, so some commentators say that they became apes, but uh, the consensus is that no one became literally an ape, but it's basically saying that you're acting like an animal, you're acting like a pig. You're, you know, you say, you, people say, why do you behave like a dog? Why do you ha- act like a, like a monkey? Why do you act like a pig? You're a pig. Look what you're doing. So that's what's being conveyed there. So the, um, you know, so the, so what I was saying for is in Yemen, uh, if Jews kept Shabbos in Islamic countries, it, it, but in Yemen in particular, I know this firsthand, if they kept Shabbos, they were 
protected people, people of the book. That's how the Quran refers to Muslims. But if they if a Jew is found not keeping Shabbos, so then they were told they had to convert to Islam. As long as they remained faithful to the Torah, which in the... By the way, Moses appears more frequently in the Quran than Muhammad, by far. There are 70 verses, passages in the Quran that are just talking about Moses. He's everywhere. The Torah is everywhere discussed. And Muhammad is exhorting the Jews to keep the Torah. But Jews who are who were hypocrites who were not keeping the Torah and those who were not keeping the covenant of Moses and so on. So they were, they were cursed. But what happens, tragically what happened is that, you know, so people who study the text understand the context, what's being said. Torah is full of, of very harsh criticism of the, of the Jewish people when they sinned. Now, but it would happen that if you have a Muslim who is just, hates Jews for whatever reason in history, they would abuse these texts, take them out of context, in order to um, just to curse Jews. But they would, that's not in line with the Quran. So, unfortunately, I mean, they would do that. I mean, they were... Um, you know, and, you know, there are Christians who say, you know, all kind of crazy things about Muslims. But the key is that these texts can be abused by those who have hate in their heart. But those who understand what the Torah is and understand the, the uniqueness of Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher, who was extolled throughout the Quran, so then they'll understand what these texts are about. There's another text, but I'm not going to go too far into this, but the text, always read the text in context and also understand um, what is the historical context of what we encounter in the Quran? So the Quran there is talking about uh, Jews who don't keep Shabbos, and they're saying they're apes. Well, that's that's mild compared to what the Torah says uh, happens to a Jew who doesn't keep Shabbos. That's 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 a, a small matter, but there, but contrast what the Quran says about Jews and Shabbos. Well, you must keep Shabbos to. Uh, what we see in the Christian Bible where the Jews are told, you don't have to keep Shabbos, you don't keep mitzvahs anymore. They threw it out. Jesus is the, fulfilled the law for us and you don't have to keep it anymore. Now you have uh, Jesus died for our sins and Islam uh, correctly rejects that as complete nonsense. I personally don't understand why um, holy books beat the Quran, beat the Torah, beat the um, in Jew, whatever you want to call, I don't understand why they have to use harsh, harsh um, language, terminology. It's, um, I don't know, I guess in today's world we frown upon it. Maybe back then it was okay to refer to someone as something. I, I don't know, I just don't get it, you know. But of course, the rabbi does try to explain that the big can code this because they're not doing what's expected of them to do. The Jews, that is, you know. And um, for the people that, you know, God requires you to do a certain thing and you're expected to do that thing. You yourself know that you're supposed to do that thing. Why shy away from doing it? So, of course, we're not perfect. We're going to forget. We're going to be distracted. All those things. But um, the best thing is to try. And I hope Jews are not offended by the fact that they're called Jew, um, apps. You know, what someone else calls you shouldn't... Of course, it's upsetting, but it shouldn't change your thoughts on the world or what you believe in or just make you a bad person. Otherwise, I'm sure in today's world, many people are doing better. No one is... I'd love to believe that one day we're going to stop all this name calling, pointing fingers or whatever it is and just do away with all that. As long as it's a word that makes someone else feel bad, then I don't feel or think we should use it. You know, let me know what you guys think. If there's anything you want me to react to, let me know down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.